hear me? Harold, Harold, we're lost. There's nothing quite like the possibilities of the open road. Every turn brings new stories, every bump a rush of adrenaline and unexpected discoveries. Stop where you want, sleep where you can, and pick up some of your favorite bites along the way. <laughs> this is Forager. Today is going to be mostly a driving day. We have a trip of about six hours to get from Belair all the way to Nueva Vizcaya. I'm currently driving the Ford Ranger Wild Track, all stock, and it's been a dream so far. We have some mountains to climb, lots of roads to kind of twist around. So the reason why we're going to Nueva Vizcaya is because not much is actually written about the province, yet it is a great way to go into um, the, no the more northern provinces of the Philippines like Isabela or Ifugao, but they also have such a strong kind of like agricultural culture and we're probably gonna get some really lovely fruits, lots of vegetables, so I'm excited to see what we can find and what we can cook. We're currently driving through a mountain range and with that comes lots of twisties and turnies, but honestly it could not be any easier with the Ford Ranger Wild Tracks hill launch assist, rollover mitigation, as well as hill descent control. Stepping on the gas, it feels like you're just driving a normal road. Um, and we have a long way to go, currently still at two hours, and then another leg that's going to take another two hours, so it helps that you don't really have to think about it too much, you can just drive. Landlocked and flanked between coastal and mountain provinces, Nueva Vizcaya flies under the radar. It's known for its stunning natural landscapes, including lush mountains, dense forests, and pristine rivers. The province is often referred to as a gateway to the Cagayan Valley and as a watershed haven and an agroforestry center. It's slowly becoming a destination for outdoor enthusiasts and tourists, thanks to its stunning landscapes and cultural heritage. It's one of the main throughways for the produce coming from Ifugao and the Mountain Province, and the province also grows a lot of its own crops. There's an increasing propagation of citrus farms, and this was something of interest to us. You don't necessarily connect the Philippines with citrus, and the mandarins and lemons sold in the markets in Manila by traders will rarely be branded as coming from the province, since geographical indication is still in its infancy in the Philippines. We heard of this one particular farm that has been growing Satsuma mandarins for decades, and they are said to be some of the best in the country. So we kept driving towards Kasibu, a beautiful valley with lots of caves and hills to trek, but we were after some much needed vitamin C. Hi po. Salamat. Hi. Erwan, nice to meet you. Bong, nice to meet you. Hi. Hello, my Mirji. Erwan, nice to meet you. Thank you. I actually thought you would smell the Cit citrus right citrus. away. No, not, not necessarily. No, not, okay. not. That was not just my open it. that was just my fantasy <laughs> oh. of what a citrus farm was. You'd come in and be like, mm, vitamin C. And this is just among the first farms okay. around here because there are uh, many farms here. Would would this be kind of like the highest concentration of citrus yes, farms yes. in the country? Yes. And by the way, sir, this is a mandarin. This yeah. is mandarin because uh, some. Miss, uh, miss conceptions uh, is that it's orange. It's orange. Ah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. actually mandarin because the characteristic is it's peelable. And they get orange eventually, or no, the skin, or does it stay green? Here in in this uh, area, it's usually this is the the the. This is the color. The, the color. Ah. It does not get that. So if I would see this in the market, I would think it's unripe. Yes. But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That is so juicy. This is almost 80% uh, of our production. 
when did you, what, what's the story behind the farm? When did you guys start? Okay, so the farm was started by our, uh, our father, our mm -hmm. parents. That's why we named it the Comila Farms, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Gilbert and Conchita Comila. Our other farms, they started it around early 90s, so to almost 30 years ago. But this farm is in the uh, early 2000s when they acquired this and then focused on planting satsuma. Okay. and other varieties. So our uh, trees are around 20 years, 20 years old. What's the seasonality usually for uh, oranges and the satsumas that you have? From okay. July to September. And aside from citrus, we grew also here other uh, tropical fruits like uh, rambutan. Yeah, rambutan uh, you can taste it because they say that compared to other areas, the, the rambutan here tastes sweeter. A little, <laughs> a little different. Actually, uh, the, the problem with um, citrus here is, as you've mentioned earlier, it's actually the market and the seasonality, yeah. right? The market wants consistent um, production, but we can't really do that here because um, we can only harvest uh, citrus once a year. Yeah. So we have to take care of it whole year round and then we only have like uh, three, four, three, months, four months. Yeah. The rattans, the rambutans, um, the... I just said it a while ago, now I forgot the name, Damarang. Damarang. <laughs> Damarang. This is mostly for Nueva Vizcaya consumption, mm -hmm. or is it also for Micromanila? Yeah, for, for Damarang, it's usually around yeah. here. Mm. It's, it does not reach the other uh, municipalities because it's very hard to transfer. Yeah. But we also grow here uh, durian and uh, mangosteen. Oh, nice. We also okay. have here. Okay. Uh, but it's the season here is on uh, from October to November. So. For the durian and mangosteen? Mm, durian okay. and mangosteen. Great. Let's go uh, have a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can. These, I like these. These oh, are super you, awesome. You enjoy the. Does anyone make ratan sinigang? They should. <laughs> it's super sour. <laughs> So these fruits, the other fruits were also infected by insects. Ah, so this means, yes. okay. So that's one of the challenges really in, in farming. But I think it's every every farming industry has this uh, has pest issue, and yeah. disease problem. Most of the tropical fruits are can actually grow here in our municipality. And the citrus prefer the colder temperatures, but not as cold as Baguio. How cold does it get here? I think it can reach up to 20. 20. 20 okay. to 25 okay. but during the December to January it can drop up to 12. Oh nice. Yes. I love that. 12 to 15. <laughs> Did you say it's horrible? That's nice. It's very cold. <laughs> okay. I thought you said it's horrible. I was like no yeah. it's the best. I cannot stress enough how important agritourism could be in the country. We need to elevate our farmers and appreciate all the work that they do to keep us fed. There is so much opportunity in high value crops and that experience is only strengthened when you can visit these farms, experience a harvest season, and chat with always generous farmers who are eager to showcase their knowledge. I absolutely love spending time with people that are so passionate and happy about what they do and loving kind of like sharing that knowledge with people I think is amazing. I'm not gonna lie, that drive took a lot out of me. I was getting really tired and grumpy at one point because that was a lot of zigzags, but I must have eaten like maybe 15 Satsuma mandarins in a span of five minutes. And I think all that vitamin C is kind of kicking in nicely, which is amazing. So I feel so much better after rambutans, ratans, marangs, Satsumas, the energy is back and flowing. So now we have an hour and 40 minute drive again. So that'll make today's total close to eight hours of driving. And our other team is hopefully already setting up the, the camp with our other Ford Ranger Wild Track. Um, no cooking tonight. We're just gonna sleep because I have a fruit salad in my belly. Our campsite for the night was literally in the middle of a misty and chilly mountain farm. You could not ask for a better location. Yes, it was raining, but that only added to the landscape. Harold, Harold, can you hear me? Harold, Harold, we're lost. Can you hear me? Okay, so there's no signal. We should be about five kilometers away from our second team, but they're not replying. 
and we've just been going up, 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 up for about 40 minutes now, and we have no idea where we're going. I think we may be lost. It's 7 p.m. and we're driving in the mountains of Mamboviskaya, blindly, and there's no lights on the street, well, barely, and there's no one. I think we're in a completely different area. Okay, so I think we have to go back. Okay. Yeah, I think we took a massive detour. Yeah. 38 minutes. We have to go back down. So we basically we went up all the way up here. We should have taken a left here. Eighteen kilometers. Oh, not all the way down. Not all the way down. <laughs> Head east. Oh, thank you. That works. Where the f is east? This is my already. Ah, okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I can't even tell where, which way is north. It's so dark. The moon's that way. My saliva tastes salty. That must be north. <laughs> I'm so tired. This is a man defeated. Team Harold, Guinea Ng, process. Team Air One, mountain bukid foraging and root crops. Team Harold buys pork, tiempo, for grilling. Team Air One starts fire. Team Harold, coffee processing. Buys coffee beans. Um, and then 11 a.m., we cook. We don't shower today. Because we're, we're animals, baby. Who? Uh, uh, <laughs> From here you can see Mount Ulag and the trails leading into it. On clear days, you get a beautiful sea of clouds and dramatic vistas anywhere you turn your head. To build our plate, we asked some friendly locals to take us around the mountain farms and into the forest to show us what kind of local ingredients can be found in these hills. Okay, so what else is Ambagyo known for except for the beautiful weather? Ambagyo is known for mountaineering activities. We have here Mount Pulol. So this is where beginners um, come to hike. We are one of the trails going to Mount Pulag, but that's uh, for hardcore hikers. We call it Ambagyo Pulag Trail. Um, Ambagyo Pulag, It's okay. a three-day, two-night hike, wow. so it's for uh, hardcore mountaineers. So people usually do it while camping? Right. Yes. Because I was reading also, you're trying to develop it as an ecotourism mm, destination, yes, right? Yes. Uh -huh. We are targeting uh, agritourism. Yeah. And yeah. what does Ambagyo mean? It comes from the word uh, Bagyu. Uh, it's, Bagyu is the moss that grows around trees. Ah, so okay. yeah. uh, when you say Ambagyu, uh, you are from the land of the moss. Ah, cool. Yes. The land of the moss. Yes. I like that. Um, cool. Okay, so we're going <laughs> to not hike up all the way to Mount Pulol. Yeah, Maybe okay, yeah. we're going to go towards it and mm -hmm. then we're going to try to grab. Um, so there's obviously some produce to get from the farmlands, mm -hmm. but then they were saying that there's some herbs that they use for like mm -hmm. teas and also mm -hmm. something to make yes. sour. Yeah. So we're going to okay. climb up and do that now. <music> 40 minutes up here or an hour around?
ito sir, uh, ito yung tinatawag namin na dagway sir. Isa tong ginagawang yung jam, pinipreserve. Sobrang asim sir. Mm. <laughs> It's like a... Um, ampalaya meets a tomato <laughs> meets a lime. Sarap. Look inside. It kind of looks like a tomato too. Ito rin sir yung tinutawag namin gipas. Ito yung ginagawa namin cha. Tapos fresh lang? First o. Oh, or... Tapos i... Or batu yung... Bukasan, tapos... Ipaklo sa tubig, pagkatapos... Siyang ano. So, hindi pa tuyo? Pwede namang tuyo, mas maganda pa na tuyo siya, sir. Mas Para malasa, no? Mas malasa, sir. Mmm. It's like, yeah. It's like a minty, herby smell. I think this could be good for our stock, or the rice. Mapait siya? Hindi naman siya. 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 Nangai. 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 <laughs> so it's another souring agent here, similar to the leaf, the dagui that we found a while ago. You kind of peel it, and then you eat it like a stick. Mmm, Kev, you're going to love this. And you eat this raw. Or you can also use it to make things sour, right? We were picking a couple of tomatoes. The typhoons ruined most of them, so you'll see a hole in them, you press it little white worms will come out. When that happens, unfortunately, the whole crop gets wasted, but we got a couple of them that were still okay. Um, and then we're gonna cook those with everything else. So I think we have enough ingredients. We have way too many ingredients now. So we can go back to the campsite, which we can see it from here. While we were setting up our kitchen station for the day, I was able to catch up on some work by connecting my laptop to the Ford Ranger Wild Tracks power socket in the back. The rest of the team went off to find some other produce they could get their hands on in Nueva Vizcaya. local po dito sa Ang Bagyo. Nagtatrabaho po ako sa munisipyo. Meron po kaming privately owned po na coffee processing po. Ang Bagyo po may sarili po silang brew kasi wala pa po ako dito, hindi pa po ako pinapanganak, may kape na po dito sa Ang Bagyo. Uh, sabi nga nila yung mga kape na nandaanan natin kanina, more than 50 years old na po yung mga yan. Para sa akin maganda yung kape namin dito kasi sabi nila maganda yung kape na galing sa malamig na lugar. Ikayo di ang bagyo, mangkapi. Dalawang klase kasi itong ginagawa namin ng kape. Robusta at itong rabika. O oh, yan. Sige, man kapi kayo ho. Di, di tang kusin na. Oh, 
yan. Tapat na. Puntahin natin mga 2 minutes para bumaba na yung nasa ibabo na umaapaw na kuwan. Itong giniling na kape. Oh, banglo. Banglo kape. In the central northern mountain ranges of the Philippines, you'll find different types of smoked and salted pork. The weather gets cold, the produce is extremely seasonal, so being able to preserve food in these areas is paramount. Here, they are making kiniing. And since I was busy foraging, we asked our story producer Harold to make his first on-camera appearance to tell us about its flavor. So, so the whole team right now is in Ambagyo, Nueva Vizcaya, and we separated teams. Erwin's team is hiking Mount Pulol to forage leaves so that he can use it to cook at the camp later. So our team decided to try out the local dishes here in Ambagyo. So this is kiniing. Smoked meat lang siya. Tapos ang luto ng locals dito, sinabawan lang. Tapos nilagyan ng black beans. Try natin. Oh. Three days silang pinapausukan tong pork meat na to. So, asin lang. Mmm, nambot. Ang sarap ng sabaw. Yung sabaw, naglasa na siyang smoked pork. So, yung locals, mahilig sa chili. Homemade to. Damn. Mmm. <laughs> So later, malalaman natin kung paano sila gumagawa ng kiniing. Ito po yung smoked meat o tawag ng kalangunya po dito, kiniing. Ang proseso po dito sa paggawa ay pinapausukan lang po. So, traditional po ito na pag-preserve ng meat noong unang panahon kasi wala pong ref noon. Kaya pinapausukan po at doon po, doon po siya napipreserve. Lalagyan po ng konting asin, tapos yung usok na po ang mag-preserve ng ano po. sweeter today. These are the bush tea leaves. They have a quite minty flavor, so I'm just going to lay them on top of the rice. Yep. 
Uh, so let's make a plate. So we have our seafood broth rice here with the tea leaves that we foraged a while ago. And then we're going to serve that with our pork that was stewed with the mandarin, the Satsuma mandarin orange juice, brown sugar, and a little bit of our dehydrated Satsumas and dehydrated lemons. And then serve all that with our like tomato salsa from the tomatoes that we got a while ago. That is a solid bite of food. And I love all the charred and burnt bits in there. It really makes you feel like you're camping. Mmm. And I love that it's a plate that re represents the lowlands we went to, the highlands here, things we forage, but things we also kind of found in the farms that are around here and people were kind enough to give to us. So now I think after that hike, I need a shower. So we're trying to find a river to bathe in. Excuse me. We are literally driving in the middle of a cornfield in the middle of a mountain range and we took the wrong turn. But the funniest thing is I am like full of confidence because <laughs> we've driven some gnarly trails so far. So Pretty, yeah, it's deeper. <laughs> I hear it. You think it's there? I mean, I don't hear any rushing from that sound. Bye. Bye! 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 I think, I think, don't be an idiot and try to see if there are any locals who are willing to help you. <laughs> Go, we passed through the main barn guy and there was no one there, so I don't know how established this place is, but the waterfall looked really cool in pictures. I'll put a picture for you now. Ching! <laughs> At least we got to have a beautiful walk yeah. in a beautiful t part of Nova Sky. So, didn't get a waterfall, we got a beautiful river. Thank you so much for watching episode two of Forager. I'm gonna dry up and we're gonna make our way towards Santiago Isabella for the third and last part of our trip. Make sure to check out the first episode of Forager and the third one that's coming out soon, presented by Ford. Peace.